Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Season Air, the platform where we speak truth to power. Um, this evening, we want to talk about the petition. Please sign the petition for the largest diamond, African diamond, in the world, not to be won by Queen Consort Camilla on King Charles' coronation. Africans say no to the colonial diamond on King Charles' coronation. It is stolen property. It must be returned. We're going to give you the reasons why. Um, Queen Camilla is just behind the picture there. You'll see her um, later on when they when I put the picture up. Um, I wanted to just do that as a as a as an intro. Um, so let's go forward and then discuss a little bit more. Let's first go into here. Now I'm going to bring a picture up. So give me a minute. I'm going to bring a picture up and you will see it shortly. A uh, picture of of road uh cecil roads and that's where this starts so that's cecil roads around there let me make my picture i think we can stop i'll do something quickly give me a minute please let me just do this hopefully just give me a minute please mm, okay then we go here yeah okay so we're gonna come out of that completely and then now uh, we're back again good so sorry about that now we start off here so that is uh Celsius roads there um let me say on the outset um the diamond is from africa what the name colonan diamond is trying to do is to separate that diamond from africa and i'm here to put to you that that diamond is african it came from african soil indeed it must return back to african soil to the africans who owns the la that 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 diamond uh, so when they put colonel you think oh it's, it was it, they tried to sort of put some sort of covenant provenance and things on it it isn't uh, this is a clear-cut case of stealing and the man that started all of that process was of course Cecil Rhodes. The words that he stated, and I'm right, I'm quoting him with direct words. Rhodes' view was that black people have needed, uh, let me say that again. Rhodes' view was that black people needed to be driven off their land. Their land. Not his land, not Afri foreign land, not UK land, off African land. Africans need to be driven off African land. Of their own land. He admits that, obviously, the, the words he said, their land. So he agrees that it's African land, but we are going to be driven off. On what ground? Who give them that power? How would you as a UK person feel to be driven off your land by somebody that comes and says, that's your land? How would you feel? That's what he's done. And, he's, and he even put what he said is what is happening to Africans in Africa in many parts based on what he said. He said, stimulate them to stimulate them to labor and to change their habits. It must be brought home to them, Rhodes said, that in future, nine-tenths, nine-tenths of them will have, their li will have to spend their lives in manual labor. So he is dictating the lives that the people who are Africans, whose ancestors have been in that land forever, for eons, dictating to, to them that they're going to have manual labor. And what is happening now, as a result of him taking out, using that Land Reform Act that he, that he brought in, that's exactly what's happened. Many Africans, particularly in South Africa, are in manual labor, but they don't know it. These are the kind of things we need to bring together. So this man here clearly has racist views, and a very, very, uh, he has a deep hatred for Africans on African soil. I could, I mean, it, it's not acceptable for on, on any level. Had it been that Africans were in on his, his UK soil, British British soil, and he wanted them away, you could they could argue for that. But for somebody who is actually, he moved people who own the land. He agrees. His statement says they should be driven off their land, which means he actually knows that that's their land. Can you imagine that psychology, the sickening, sickening twist 
the sickening greed that lies within that kind of thinking. So, so I mean, so, so that's the words, the context in which we have to put this Colonel Diamond. This man is the beginning of it all. He got there in 1890, and I will tell you the story. But what I want to do now is, here you see King Edward, I think it is, um, that abdicated the throne with um, win, wins, whatever I mean, uh, you know, something we will see, you know, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Um, but where you see there is the royal family all going to visit the grave of the man you see in the picture. Uh, it's nothing more than a racist, in my point of view, in my own opinion, based on this, the views he holds about black people. So let us do this. So, so you will see King Edward, I think it is, if I'm correct. I'm not sure. I think it may be King Edward. I'm not sure. Um, before he, you know. And that's the Queen Mother there. So let's pause it. Pause it right there. That's the Queen Mother. And that's the Queen there. And her sister also is on the, um, you know, to the right of her. And I'm not quite sure who that man is. You know, they were all there um, to see the grave of Cecil Rhodes. And there's a reason why they are that grave. Because it was through his reforms that stripped Africans of the land that Thomas Colonel was able to buy that land on the cheap from another Af South African, another, another foreigner who was able to get that land on the cheap because of the laws that was imposed by Cecil Rhodes on Africans that we couldn't own our own land in our own land in Africa. That is why the Colonel Diamond is a no-no. It's a no-no. We will put our, uh, uh, our objections out. The Indians have done the same thing on Koino uh, diamonds. We're doing the same on the uh, um, so-called Colonel diamonds. There has to be. There used to be a name for that area. I will. If any South African knows the real name for that area, they call it Premier uh, Premier Number Two. We're not. That's not a name. We want the real African name for that area. We want it, and that name has to be restored, and that diamond must be returned back to where it came from. In Africa, because it's African. The idea to try and call it Colin and is trying to claim that it's an, it's an European. No, it's Africa. And for a man, I want you to look at the grave. For a man who detests Africans, and the words, again, I'm going to read the words to you so that it actually makes, you know, for a man who detests, who says Rhodes' view, his views was that black people needed to be driven off their land stimulate them to labor and to change their habits. It must be brought home to them. Rhodes said that in future, nine-tenths of them will have to spend their lives in manual labor. And the sooner that is brought home to them, the better. The man who said those words, equally eager for himself to be buried amongst the very people he hates. That's irony for you, isn't it? So he wants the land, he doesn't want the people. But the land and the people are one. And that is the fact. And that's why we're bringing this. So we say loud no to the Colonel uh, Diamond on coronation um, of the King um, um, King Charles. Now, let's proceed. Let us proceed. So we're going to watch the video. We posted there again. That's the Queen Queen Anne, uh, Queen Consort Anne, I think it is. Uh, if I'm correct, I can't remember. You know, Queen Mother. And then the Scottish, you know. And uh, the Queen Elizabeth and her sister. I can't remember her name again. But anyway. They were all there. So, and that, the, the grave there is Cecil Rhodes in the picture. Let me bring that picture back again because we need to connect everything. We have to connect the dots. So, now, let's do that now. Uh-huh. Sorry about that. Oops. Okay, so let's play on. So, now, here we go. Ah, they're better. Better. You can get a better picture. So, there, the queen, her sister, not quite sure who that is, and her mom. And that's the big grave of Cecil Road. So let's carry on. So you will see them moving towards the Cruelly grave and they were looking. So this is, they were telling a story. Again, keep in mind, this man didn't like black people. So what's he doing on black soil? Why is he buried on black soil? He should be buried in Bishop Stortford. If he hits the, the vial that he's spewing out against us black people on our land, he shouldn't be on that land. Based purely on what he said, we judge a man by his words. Who, those words, they are, for, they are forever on him. And we need to share those words for the world to really see who he was. 
So when they talk about scholarship and everything, they're trying to obscure the evil acts he carried out on black people. Yes, like me. Now, let's carry on. Okay. So there you go. So I'm going to bring that back. So you can see him. You can see the queen mother and the sister and, uh, you know, and queen. And that's the grave. So they're talking about the grave again. Sorry about that. I want you to just see that. So you can see them. And then they're all standing there. And then they're coming up. Some are coming up to the grave. And they're all, you know, and that thing, I think that's King, uh, King, yeah, King Edward or something. I can't remember. The one who abdicated. And, uh, you know, I think one of his people, bad career or something. Doesn't matter. Um, what I'm trying to show you is the grave of Cecil Rhodes, the man who so much hated Africans, but yet he's happy to stay on African soil. That's him there. That's his, that's his grave right there. Let's, uh, let me just pause it. Yeah, that's him there. So let me pause it right there. One second. <coughs> So that's him there. That's a man who so much hated black people. And the words that he said are really unforgivable. Let me blow it up so you can see yourself. I want you to see those words yourself. There you go. So you can see the words clearly. Rhodes' view was that black people needed to be driven off their land to stimulate them to labor and to change their habits. Who gave him the power? No man has a right to change the habits of another. Particularly, you're, not, you're, you're a foreigner in Africa. You are. That's the reality. Um, it must be brought home to them, Rhodes said, that in future, nine-tenths of them will have to spend their lives in manual labor. The sooner that is brought home to them, the better. That is a very racist, racist, racist statement right there. But these are things they try to hide from you and me. That's why we need to reject the colonial diamonds being worn at King Charles's coronation. We need to reject it because this is racism at its core. It's, it is the, under, it's the foundation for how they came to possess the colonial diamonds. Let's carry on. So now, <clears throat> so we're going to go forward. I'm going to pause it there. I want, I'm going to leave the grave there so you can see that. Now we're going to move forward to the next thing. The next thing I want to do um, is to... So the video is there. You can see it. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go to the next part of it. I want to give you a bit more detail in terms of um, Cecil Rose himself. So go forward. Now, here we go. <clears throat> That's Cecil Rhodes' his childhood. We're not interested in that. You know, he's, he was, his childhood, he comes from here. Just so you know, that's Bishop Stockford. That's where he comes from. All the way in England. Hertfordshire, England. Yeah, that's where he comes from. So, now let's go forward to where the damage is. And that's him there as a boy, you know. Um, so I'm not going to read his story. I'm not interested in that. And that's their home, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there must be, you know, we need to, I think we, I'm probably going to do, I might be going to that home and we need to do something about that. We need to try and not, you know, just, just to go and take a picture, just to go and show that that house was a house in which the racist lived. To be honest with you, this is really, you know, what I, I mean, it is, it's, it's so sickening. And that's him there, 16, age of 16. Now, um, let me show you the section that I need to go to. Let's go to the, you can read the rest in the base, whatever. I'm not interested in that. Now here, this is the one I want you to look at. In 1880, uh, Rhodes prepared to enter public life at the Cape with earlier incorporation of Greek lad Wayne's colony and Montenegro. In 1877, after, after the area had obtained six seats in Cape, South, Cape House of Assembly, Rhodes chose the rural predominantly Boer constituency of Barclay West, which would remain loyal to Rhodes until his death. When Rhodes became the member of the Cape Parliament, the chief goal of the assembly was to help decide the future of Basuto land. Basuto land. So you already, you can see it's a colony, 1884 to 19. So it is around that period where the Berlin, this is all tied into the Berlin Conference. I hope you're seeing the connection. This is tied to the Berlin Conference. Um, you can't see the words, but I can see it. It says here, 1884 to 1966, uh, Lesotho. So the Berlin Conference was where all of the 14 European countries came and took over forcibly African land, preventing Africans from come to, coming to, to speak for themselves and represent themselves rather than have their lands carved up. This prevented them from coming. And that means we're not humans in the eyes of this, those who, the, the Berlin Conference, we're not seen as human beings. If we're not even allowed to even argue our case for why our kingdoms should be left intact, they didn't want to hear it. 
That's the sign of, you see, the, the Berlin Conference is a clear expression of the, the, the racism that is deeply embedded in those who carved up and, 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 and the entire African, African continent, rejecting any attempt by the kings of the kingdoms to come at that table and explain and say, look, we don't want this. This is our land. They don't count us as human beings. That's the reality. But they want to benefit from our land. Can you see the irony? Can you see the irony? Mm. Let's proceed now. Now let's go. So in 1890, Rhodes became a prime minister to the Cape Colony. He introduced various acts of parliament to push black people from their lands and make way for industrial development. Rhodes' view was that black people needed to be driven off their land. Remember I said that? To stimulate them to labor and change their habits. It must be brought home to them, Rhodes said, that in future, nine-tenths of them will have to spend their lives in manual labor. And the sooner that is brought home to them, the better. Now, in 1892, Rhodes brought in this Franchise Ballot Act, an act of the Cape Colony Parliament driven by Prime Minister Cecil Rhodes, which raised the property franchise qualification, thus disenfranchising a large proportion of the Cape's non-white voters. Can you see? So Africans who owned the land suddenly became non-white. Straight away, they psychologically changed it to that non-whites, you're in the minority. So the whites are the minority. So can you see the psychological game that's being played here? That is what you need to really understand. Again, this is tying back to the Colonel Diamonds. I'm going to show you that, the picture of the diamonds. In fact, I need to pull it up again um, before I go ahead because you need to see that picture. So anyway, so now, uh, in fact, it will be probably good to bring it to the story as it comes to it. When the time comes, when, it, when we go over the 1900, then the diamond will appear in this discussion. It will appear. So let's carry on. So, now, in 1892, Rhodes Franchise um, Act raised the property requirements from a relatively low $25 to a significant higher 75, which had a disproportionate effect on, pre of pre on the previously growing number of enfranchised black people in Cape under the Cape Qualified Franchise. Can you see? was the system of non racial franchise that adhered to the Cape Colony and in the Cape Province in the early years of the Union of South Africa. Qualifications for, for the right to vote at the parliament elections were applied equally to all men, regardless of race. Can you see? He replaced this with the Franchise Pilot Act. He replaced it. Can you see that? It has been in force since 1853. He replaced that to ensure they grab the land. Do you understand? That is what, that is what Roach did. And of course, it's by instruction from, from the from the from the from, you know from the mother from UK, I'm sure, uh, they had a part to play in it. So you can see, so that was there, whereby everybody, all men were you know regardless of race, all men equally able to vote. By restricting people to vote, they took the land. They, they, that was a, the criteria in which it made it difficult. And of course, by increasing the 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 the, 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 the requirement from 25 to 25, it. It actually stopped Africans from being able to, to fully participate in everything that's going on in their land and having a say. That's racism. You see now, the policy that is being applied here is a racist policy, and that is still the case till today that is impacting Africa till as we speak. I'm not saying it for you to feel sorry for me if you are a European watching this. I'm stating the facts. I am stating the facts so that you know that we know what you're doing. And we're saying no more. Let's carry on. Okay. So, um, no. So, by limiting the amount of land which black Africans were legally allowed to hold, Glenn Gray Act. Again, the Act of Parliament of Cape Colony, instigated by the government of Prime Minister Cecil John, John Rhodes, it established a system of, of individual land tenure and created the labor tax to force Kosa men in employment, in employment, to f into employment on commercial farms or industry. I mean, this is this is racism. This is this is just this is just you could see it's just p racism is coming through the pores of this Cecil Rhodes. Racism, racism, racism. Everything, and that is the foundation upon which this colon and gold diamond was led, ended up in the hands of the of the of the monarchy. Monarchy. I will show you something, the Royal African Company. 
We're going to talk about that as well in this broadcast. So it's good to give, give a rounded picture so we understand the history of what's been done. Now, okay, so I know it's going to be long-winded, but just 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 stay with me for a bit. So now, um, wrote for that different different tribes, black people. To quote Richard Downton, most will now find it almost impossible to get the back to get back on the list of list because of the illegal limit of the amount of land they could hold. In addition, Rhodes was an early architect of the Native Land Act. See that? This act here. I want you to read it. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, the Native Native. Let me go go back. Can I go back down? Let me go back down. So I want to just yeah. So I want to go back here. Yeah, here we go. So you can see it now. I want to bring it that here. So let's read it <clears throat> on the screen. The Native Land Act 1913 was an act of the Parliament of South Africa that was aimed at regul regulating acquisition of land. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the Native Land Act of 1913 defined less than one-tenth of South Africa as black reserves and prohibited any purchase. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find the rest. Is that the key? Let's go into it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so it, 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 in effect, it's restricted the, the ability of black people to buy land. It prohibited it. So it, this is racism. This, the, the, everything I'm telling you now is all racism. It is barefaced racism. And that is what the, the royal family are going to now say proudly wear on a crown. It must return to South Africa. It has to. So let's carry on. So you can see now... Now you can see the foundation for this Colonel um, um, Diamond. It's not Colonel. We need to know the name of that area because that name, that place was named by Africa. And I'll try and find it on an old map. I'm going to try and see an old map, see if I can get that name out and then put it on it because that's a name we must call it. Now, so it says here, which would limit the areas, 19, so it's the Native Lands Act, which would limit areas of the country where black people were allowed to settle. To less than 10 percent look at that you see native native land act so he was an early architect let me read that to you Rhodes was an early architect of the native land act which i showed you before this moment ago which would limit the areas of the country where black africans were allowed to settle to less than 10 percent at the time Rhodes would argue that the native is so is to be treated as a child and denied franchise that's racism the natives are to be treated as a child and denied franchise. That is racism. This is racism. We must adopt a system of despotism. Despotism such as works in India in our relations with the barbarism of South Africa. This is racism. And that's the foundation for that colonial diamond. I will get to it. Now, let's go on. Rhodes also introduced educational reform into the area. His policies were instrumental in the development of the British imperial policies of South Africa, such as hot tax. What is hot tax? Let's go and look at that. Let's go and look at hot tax. This is a, the hot tax was a form of taxation introduced by British in their African possessions on a per hot basis. It was previously payable in money, labor, grain, or stock and benefited the colonial authorities in four interconnected ways by raising money, supporting the economic value of the local currency. Hmm. Hot tax. I mean, so they were extricating money from those who had hot. In their own land. Wow. Racism at its finest. Mm. Yeah. Let's continue to dig. Let's continue to dig. So, so, the, so I didn't even know there's something called a hot tax. I, I'm amazed. Rhodes did, however, have a direct political power over the uh, Boa Transversal. Anyway, that's between the Boas and all of them. I'm not interested in that because uh, it's, it's one side against the other in, in terms of trying to get control over people who originally own the land. So I'm not interested in that. And I'm, But, you know, others, you can go and read it. You can go and read that. Um, Rhodes was sued by Boros. Let me see this Boros guy, if, they, if, if there's anything. Uh, his suit was, his, he, okay, sued and he won. Anyway, that's that's besides the point. This is what happened to Africans collectively on African soil is, is, is collectively damaging. Now, let's go and have a look. Okay, so now, Rhodes used his wealth and that of his business partner, Alfred Bait, and other investors to pursue his dream of creating British Empire. You see? In new territories to the north by obtaining mineral concessions from the most powerful indigenous chiefs. You see? So, I mean, 
the chief thing. I mean, the, the picture that they're showing again, you can tell again, they're trying to even, you know, sort of saying that we, we have that we don't have a value of what of our own stuff. I mean, anyway, Rhodes competitive advantage over the mineral, other minerals prospecting companies was a combination of wealth and astute political instincts, also called the imperial factor as he often collaborated with the British government. He befriended, he befriended local representatives, the British commissioners, and through them organized British protectorate, protectorate over the mineral concession areas via separate but related treaties. It's all about all the, everything you hear is treaties. All over Africa, they were using treaties where the locals knew nothing of what they were signing. This is, this is illegal. This is corruption. The treaties are indeed corruption documents. I state it categorically. They are corruption documents to carry out corrupt acts against people to whom the land belongs. Now, anyway, let's carry on. So, in this way, you know, so I, I'm not going to go too much into that now, but you can see, uh, anyway, you can see the thing. So, the key things that I want to re bring to your attention is the land, Native Land Act, which would, let's go back here, uh, which would limit, so uh, Rhodes was an early architect of the Native Land Act, which would limit the areas of the country where black people, black Africans were allowed to settle to less than 10% of the entire country. 10% of the entire country. So they took over 90%. 90%. And there was areas where there were resources that they targeted. That's racism right there. Call it what it is. That's racism right there. And that area is now where we're going to go. And of course, the hot tax. And that's him there with his, uh, you know, being striding across a land that doesn't belong to him. He comes from... Bishop Stortford in Hertfordshire. That's where he came from. He couldn't do that there, but he came to do that on Africans. And he didn't like Africans on African soil. Africans didn't ask him to come. He came. And then he turned on the people who, to whom the land took it from them, oppressed them, turned them into laborers on their own land. Wow. And people will say that's not racism. These are facts. Now let's carry on. Okay. So... Uh, so Ruth Colossal was, was by Edward Lindsay and published by Punch. You know, to show, to show, I mean, this is something that, were, that some, no doubt some people will be proud of that, that picture. Um, and, 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 it's, and it's got this, the, 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 it's got this, um, this kind of like, a, anyway, it's, it's all, it's, it's got very negative connotations, racist connotations, all of it. You know, to stamp a stride across Africa. And that's, you know, that's my sphere of influence. That's area I control. And that is what the colonel, to wear that crown, that's what it signifies. And we need to say no. That is what the colonel, this, the, look at his legs across, you know, one, you know, uh, uh, Southern Africa and the Eastern Africa. You know, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, 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 anyway, so, so there he, there he is. So now what I really want us to do is to so keep in mind of that, 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 that uh, 1913 uh, 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 land, land, land Act, which, which I spoke about, Native land, land Act. Again, it would limit the areas of the country where black people were allowed to settle to less than 10%. So you can't even settle in your own land. And a foreigner comes and tells you you can't settle in your own land in Africa. Is that not racism? Wow. Let's carry on. Okay. Now, so, so this went on, and I think he passed away. I'm not quite sure when he passed away. Uh, he, you know, he was, he, he because of the, the Boer War, something happened, and he, you know, I, I don't know what happened to, but, but anyway, he, he lost power, and he was, apparently was ill, and all of that. So, but what I really want to go to is this issue of um, the Colin and Diamonds, because you see, this land act here, this land act here, and that is very important point for us all to understand as we're going forward. This land act, um, this native land and land act, which means that ninety percent of the land and many of them were areas with resources, laden with resources, mineral resources of which they found the, the diamond, was taken away from the people who own the land. By Cecil Rhodes, who you saw, the Queen. Mother, uh, El Queen Elizabeth, her sister, and King Edward at the time all went to his grave in Africa. And he hates Africans. He shouldn't be buried in Africa. He should be sent back home and that gold and that diamond be sent back. That's what should happen. 
We should do an exchange. Yes, let's do an exchange. Send Cecil Rhodes' body back to Bishop Stortford in England and then repatriate the diamond that they stole because of the Native Lands Act, taking 90% of the land that belonged to the people away from them. 90%. That is the claim we are making, categorically. Why the um, Cullinan diamond? And we need to find the original name because it's not Cullinan. Now, this is where Cullinan comes in. So let's go to Cullinan. Let's go to Cullinan. So who's Cullinan diamond? So th what's the Cullinan diamond? This was a diamond that was found. So we now, you do it back to front if you like a little bit. So the Cullinan diamond is the largest gem quality rough diamond ever found, weighing 3,106 carats, 620.20 grams, discovered by the Premier, at Premier number two, which is what you see. This is in South Africa. And we need to find the name of that location. It's Premier Number Two. They called it after mining Colonel, South Africa, 26th of January 1905. They found that Thomas Colonel, the owner. So let's go into Thomas Colonel. He's not the owner of the land, but you can see that that's what they did because, and he was able to own that land because of the direct action of Cecil Rhodes, going back to the Native Land Act of 1913, which meant, which meant that 90 percent of the land. The owners of the land, the Africans could not, they, they, they were pushed out of. So they had less than 10%. And majority of the 9%, 90% were areas of resources, such as the, um, where they found the diamond. So let's go and look at Cullinan now. Let's go and look at that. Thomas Cullinan is the name. So he was, you know, we're not interested in where he was born. I'm not interested in that. If, you know, I'm not interested. Cape Colony, all of that was moving in today. Now, the key thing you need to understand now is that there was a guy called Joachim Prince Lou. Um, that guy apparently, from what, by all accounts, is um, another African man, you know, um, um, another European settler coming in and taking over the land. And he was able to, this Joachim Slow again, was able to benefit directly from this Native Land Act. Directly, because the black people were not able to get the land. So people, whoever bought those lands, would get it on the cheap. That's racism right there. This is racism. Racism is written all over this, writ large. However, when you look at it, the policies are racism driven. It's it, the policies are directly driven by racism. That is what I we're stating here. So, let's go back to that other document. So we're going here. Is that it? Yeah, here we go. So, so anyway, um, so that was why the owner suddenly they didn't tell us how much the owner paid for it. Uh, let me see. Uh, they're talking about Colonel now. He discovered, they're trying to tell us, they're trying to paint the story, you know. Uh, you know, he discovered the Premier Diamond Field in 1898. So, you can see now, they said he discovered it in 1898. So, Rhodes came in, look at the time now, look at the time, let's go back to what Rhodes did in 1890. Yeah? So, let's go back to what Rhodes did. So, follow me on this one. So, Rhodes became Prime Minister when? 1890, yeah? Look at the time, 1890. By 18, 1913, so between 1890 and 1913, he was the, he was an early architect. So he had designed the Native Land Act that was in effect. So obviously, the 90% of the land made it now possible for the likes of Thomas Collingham and indeed before him, Joachim Prince Lou, to buy African land on the cheap. Now, the story goes that this guy had discovered there's usually something more to the story, as they say, because if they're trying to paint the picture. Oh, they just discovered, uh, you know, he discovered, you know, he moved to Parktown, an upcoming suburb around ran the view. Uh, you know, they're trying to paint the picture. He was his home, his home built, he discovered the prime diamond, prime diamond field in 1898. They lay considerable distance from existing diamond fields, but from the find of a diamond on the surface of the farm fence, again, uh, farm fence, uh, he deduced that the diamond found in uh, alluvial soil must have been swashed from some higher diamond bearing geolo geological position. Such a position presented itself with shape of a nearby copy. So let's have a look. Okay. With concealed diamond bearing blue ground pipe. Hmm. The owner of the mine, Joachim Prinslow, had sold the land both gold and diamond prospectors before and would not sell. However, Colonel succeeded in purchasing the land in 52, in, in, for 52000 from Prince Lou's daughter, who inherited the farm after her father's death. 
Colonel was one of the co-founder of the chair of the who became Transvaal, whatever. So what I'm saying is this. I think that happened in 1902, if I'm correct, if I can see. So already, you can see already that there is some, I think there is, I've read somewhere that this was got by 1902. If I'm, I need to find that document somewhere. So let's, let's do some digging. Let me just do some digging. I'll come for, give me a second. Just want to find something here. So let me just type in this here. Because there was a document that actually gives us a bit more precise. Uh, 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 um, let me see. Let me just put that up. Beg your pardon. One minute. Uh, just one minute. Okay. Sorry. Hope it's not doing what I think. Okay, so I mean, okay, so let's have a look, no that's not it, so we're going to try and find that, one minute, I'm just trying to find this for you, give me a minute please, I'm just going to make sure we got the right name and everything else, so I am just looking for a bit more information that's more complete and you can you can deduce more from it if you like. Uh, so, okay, just do this for me. Okay, so... Okay, so now... So, he died in 18... No, he can't have died in... No, 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 no. Okay. Let me have a look at this. Yeah. Okay, good. I think I found it. By the way, just as another side note, I, I found this out. This is the statue that was put up for for Somos, Comos Colonel. That's the statue that was put for him in South Africa. Keep in mind, this is land that they occupied illegally. It's all, all illegally occupied because it's African land. They took it over because of the resources. So let's see if I can find that information again. One second, I just want to quickly go through it. Uh, I'm going to find that for you. One second. One second. One second. I'm just going to try and find that. We need to find these things, you see. Oh, one minute, please. I need to find that information. I've got to send it to you. We need to make sure it's all, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where is it going? Um, no, one second, here we go, is that it? I may be able to source it, but I'm not too sure, no, that's not it, that's not it. One second, I'm just trying to find this for you quickly. I think I have something, but I don't want to say yet until I know it for a fact that I have it. Um, okay, there is a way, I, there's a way around it. This is an information that I have, and I thought just in case it doesn't show up, there is a backup um, way to get it. So just give me a minute. I'm just trying to find that for you. Just hang with me on the. Okay, so let me just try that this way then. Yeah, I think I've got it. So, so let's do that. Okay. So, one minute, one minute. So, we'll just get there. Uh -huh. So, let's go and have a look at this. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Not that one. The story changes a little bit here and there, but but it's essentially the same thing. So I'm just trying to find that information for you. I had it, and I need to make sure it is the same thing. What does it say here? It's true. Yeah, that's correct. That is the right one, isn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look at what it says here. Okay. 
uh, I'm just trying to find the right one because it had this. This had a very much more detailed thing. So I'm going to show you the way they found. We're going to show the diamond in a minute, but it's it's going to be the big reveal. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look at this. Please keep in mind that this is something that belongs to Africa and it must return to Africa. There's no doubt about that. It has to be returned. Okay, it doesn't look like he wants to play, so but there's another way around it. Um, I just knew that it may be handy and uh, it's a good job I did what I did to be able to bring it to you. So, that is going to come up shortly. I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to do this. There you go. So I'm going to show you this. So a bit more story on that was this one. Sir Colonel made an attempt to buy the land from the owner Joachim Prince Lou, but did not succeed. After Prince Lou's death, he was able to purchase the land for 52,000 naira from Prince Lou's daughter. The Colonel Kimberlite was discovered in 1902. And in 1903, the open pit mining commenced. The mine was named Premier Mine. So that's the one I wanted to put. So we could put some time. So you can see that it slots right in into the agenda of uh, uh, um, um, Cecil Rhodes. So he laid the foundations back in 1890, whereby, uh, and, 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 and then that then led to the Native Lands Act, which would limit the areas of the country where black Africans were allowed to settle to less than 10%. So if you can't settle, you don't own anything. We were slaves in our own land. That diamond must come back to South Africa, and we are advocating for it, and that's why we're doing this program. So, now, so let me go back again. Sorry, I don't know if I've got that there. I don't want to forget it. So, this is what we're talking about, and now there's the big reveal to go next to it. This one. So, this was the diamond that they found. You see, it was discovered. The colonel came out, was discovered, and commenced the man was named Premier Inn. So this this mine, uh, uh, you know, was uh, discovered in ninety two, and the open pit mining commenced. So that was where they found this this diamond. It's an African soil, and then the location itself is something I want to also make sure you have in your possession to see as well. So where is the mine that was opened up? Uh, where is it? I had a picture just now. One second, please. Um, mm -hmm. It will come up in a minute. Trust me, it will be here. I've got it. I just need to locate it. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. There is another way around it anyway. No, not to worry. I'm going to try and... So that's the message there. So we will get around this way. And I want to make sure the mine, mine two is called. That's where exactly where they found it. And we need to have that there. Sorry. That's why I couldn't see it. Uh, I just have to just check things as I'm going through. So the mine two, they call it. Uh, Premier mine two was where they so-called, they found it apparently. Keep in mind, it is what belongs to Africans. So, uh, where was it now? I'm trying to find that. <laughs> I, have, I saw it just now. There we go. Premier Mine. So, that is where... So, let me just check. This is uh, still working. Just make sure you can get that. So, this is, the, this is where they dug out. That's where they dug out. That's the site they dug out for that... So let me do this so you can see it next to it, so you can see. Because I'm trying to make sure you pin everything and pull all of this together. That's the site where, let me move it up. I need to move it up a touch because that way it's above my head and you can see it in its glory. So that was the mine in which they found that. So you can see, you can see the hole. It's, you know, that's why they found it. You know, so they dug and found, I'm, I'm, who knows what else they found there. What well, important is this is African land. And remember, uh, Cecil wanted to drive us off our land. And he succeeded. And then he put the likes of jo Prince Lou, Joachim, Joachim Prince Lou, and then yeah. Colonel to benefit from what should rightly be 
the uh, for Africans, and we want that returned. So I, I'm I'm just making the connection there. So so that's where that diamond comes in. So the question now is this. Now the next step of it. So you so we're giving you a bit more information now. So the next step now is to do this. This is what we want to show you. Uh, one second, please. One second, please. One second, please. Yeah. So now here is what where you come in. This is where you come in, and we really like your help in this. Uh, this is a petition that's on change.org, and we would like you to help us sign it. Uh, change.org. Please help us sign this petition. Africans say no to the Colonel Diamond on coronation. It is stolen property of South Africa. It must be returned. Um, I think we'll probably, I might adopt it. You know, we can, I might alter it. But we need to get the signature on it. Please help us sign this. I'll put the link for this petition in the broadcast, in the, in the, in the link when, on, on YouTube. You will see it come up. So we would need you to sign it. And again, it talks about, I want you to read these words here. I mean, those are the words that I, I came up with. Um, the one I want you to understand is this. The words he said, stimulate them to labor and change their habits. It must be brought home to them. Roots said that in future, nine-tenths of them will have to spend their lives in manual labor. And the sooner that is brought home to them, the better. So that is what I'm saying here, you know. The diamond in question must not be referred to as Colonel Martin was through the Franchise and Ballot Act, and I'm going to change that, and also the Land Reform Act that is also that made it possible, you know. So this, these are things that we are trying to state. So we'll give an update on that. But essentially, you can read through, you know, the bits. Here, this is the bit you need to understand. Roads, Franchise and Ballot Act raise the property requirements from Merity 25, low 25 to significant 75. And then it talks about the, I think it's, yes, Native Land Act. It says here, the, the, the Native Land Act 1930, which would limit the areas of the country where black people were allowed to settle to less than 10%. You know, so these are information that you can use to help us to reach more people. Get them to read this and we'll probably provide more updates. But essentially in May this year, Queen Consort Camilla is planning to wear this diamond. Let me show you again. Excuse me, dear Pelin. The queen is planning to wear this diamond. Um, to wear this diamond. Uh, the it's not Colonel, and we need to start. You know, that diamond there. She's planning to wear it. They're gonna put it on this crown. They're trying to reset it on this crown. So we need to say no. So I want as many Africans as possible to please sign this petition. That's all you have to do. Please sign this petition. When you watch this video, please share to family and friends and I'll come back and talk about it. I'm probably going to go and do a live broadcast again tonight and I'll try and talk about this. This I'll put this link up on, you know, on various platforms. We need to, you know, as many people as possible to sign this petition. So that's a diamond. So let me put it to this side because I want you to see what you need to do so just click on it click on the the says no africans say no to colonel diamond on coronation it is stolen property of south africa so that's what we want you know we need to make sure and 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 there are there comes a time we'll have to change the name of all of the african countries because like i said to you even the fact that they wouldn't allow africans to represent themselves at the Berlin conference is evidence that we were not considered to be human beings and that is why I'm saying that to now show this as a, as a wealth or something is actually to take what is ours. And we should not accept that. So let me give you a further update on this diamond, if I can, about the colonel diamond. So, so uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, so he, nobody could buy it. So, um, colonel diamond, the reference to Sartor Commerce. Thomas Cullinan, who opened in mine in 1902, three times the size of excess of diamond in Jeff, Jeff Jagaston mine. Where's that? Where's Jagaston mine? Let me see what this one is in. Again, South Africa. There are so many things found from South Africa that, you know, it's, it's crazy. It, this is, I mean, what the more you look at this, the more, you know, presented presentation to Edward the, the Seventh. You see, Edward was at the, yeah. So this is what I'm saying. These are things that we need to really be aware of. 
you know um you know so so yeah so these are things that we i mean the, the story is there you can see it so you can see now so inherited you know the is it the second the second largest is cousin and two after star wing 317 carat mountain on imperial state crown both are part of the crown jewels of united kingdom seven other major, di major diamonds weighing 208 were privately owned by the queen who inherited them from her grandmother queen mother the queen also owned more and a brilliant a set of unpolished fragments the, all this all these are from africa and africans who own it they should all be returned they should all be returned all be returned no ifs no buts so we're trying to give you you know so now you can see the full reason about the, the about the um why the colonel must be returned um you know all this excuse we're not interested we more, we're not interested in it as africans it was taken from africa it must be returned to africa you know um we cannot allow that to continue this is injustice and for the for the queen consort to wear it is it is the, is, is to continue uh, the, uh this this uh, this enslaving mentality that is they perceive they, 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 they they're projecting onto africans and we mustn't accept it we reject it totally in their everything in all its form in however we spiritually psychologically everything it is rejected and we want no part of it those diamonds must be returned to africa so that's why we're saying what we're doing um the other thing i wanted to show you was one more thing i cannot f oh one second it's gonna come to me yeah i think that's it so let's go back into the petition so please sign this petition please sign this petition share it let it reach let us let it reach as many people as possible sign this petition and we'll put the link on so thank you for watching You've been watching Citizen Network, the platform where we speak truth to power. I know it was a bit long-winded, winded, but we're trying to explain why we as Africans we reject uh, the 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 colonial diamond on coronation. You know, it is stolen property of South Africa. It must be returned. Um, like I said, all of this is it signifies to wear something that was stolen. You know, from from Africans by 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 way of the of the Land Reform Act of you know, of 1913. Of who's who the acti main architect was Cecil Rhodes is 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 is, is sickening and we, we find it vile and 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 uh, you know sickening as Africans. So I urge every African to sign this, um, share it among friends and family. Please share it. This the link will be in there. Please share, share, and share. You're watching Citizen Network, the platform where we speak truth to power. I'll be back later on. Please help us promote this. I'll probably be doing a live broadcast soon in a short while to bring this. You know to the attention of other people as well even if it's for an hour please help us share it i urge you it's really really important uh, we say no to the colonial diamonds on coronation of king uh, king charles we say no to it so uh, the queen consort camilla must not wear it she mustn't it because it's african it must be returned okay so thank you very much i will probably provide more updates that title might change as we go along because we're trying to update it as we go along as much as we can to give it more relevance and please support it help us you're watching this is the platform where we speak truth to power just go onto the page read it read read it leave comments you know we'll post updates as and when we get it and make changes as and when is necessary but please help us spread the message we need to reach as many people as possible thank you for watching you're watching this is the platform where we speak truth to power i'll back later on thank you bye for now